Yo, what is up guys? We are hot off the heels from our first event of the January 2020 TCG format and boy was it something. This past weekend at Pro Play Tour Orlando, we had an abundance of Spiral players with the top 16 breakdown including 9 Spiral decks. 9 guys, 9. We got rid of Striker Orcus, but now we have to deal with Spiral. Alongside Spiral, we had 2 Altergeist. And then we had a bunch of one-offs, including Goki, which I think nobody saw coming whatsoever. We had, I believe, one Lost World Dinosaur, one Salman Great. One Cyber Dragon Orcus which I honestly didn't know was still playable after the ban list. And we had one Luna Light Danger. Luna Light as a whole is just an absolutely insane engine because there's just no hard ones per turn on Luna Light Tiger. In the finals, we saw it come down to Altergeist going head to head with Spyro. And in the end, Altergeist actually ended up topping over Spyro. But just because Altergeist won, I wouldn't necessarily say that Altergeist is the best deck because when you're looking at Altergeist, the deck itself is already established. There's really not much you can do in combination with text that you can play in a deck. Compared with Spiral, if you look at Spiral in the top 16 breakdown, you'll realize that there was actually three different variants of the deck being played. Not just one. There were a lot of different tech cards that saw playing the deck. So going forward, I think Spiral can only just become a better deck than it currently is. Because the deck just seems to be so versatile. And there's just so many different ways that the deck can play through spicy techs and through the end boards that it can end on. But yo guys, don't worry because I'm going to help you beat Spiral, beat Altergeist, and beat whatever other deck you're playing against because I'm going to give you the 5 best side deck cards of the format. So making this list from 1 to 4, I had a really easy time deciding what 4 cards to put into the video. But for number 5, it was a little bit more iffy. But ultimately, I decided to go with Macro Cosmos. That's right. For any deck that is capable of playing this card, you are going to have a great time. Because Macro Cosmos against the meta currently is absolutely phenomenal. Whether you're going up against Spiral, you're going up against Salamand Great, you're going up against any variation that plays Danger or Orcus, even anything that has Luna Lights, because these decks are so heavily reliant on their cards hitting the graveyard that if you just flip Macro Cosmos on them, they are going to have a terrible time. And even in the scenario that they make something like Nightmare Phoenix, you have to realize that the two monsters that they're using to go into Nightmare Phoenix are not hitting the graveyard. The cost that they're pitching for Nightmare Phoenix is not going to the graveyard. The other thing that I love about Macro Cosmos is that it's currently at 1. I'm sure you're like, okay, well, what do you mean? That just means you're going to see it less. Yeah, that's the that's downside to it. And there's a reason it's at 1. It's such a good card. But the positive is it only takes up one slot in your side deck. So that means you have the versatility to play so many other cards because you don't have to be reliant on maxing out on 3 Macro Cosmos. Because this one card is so versatile and is so good against so many decks that if you see it, you see it and it does damage. And if you don't see it, it's fine because you've got other side deck cards. You're not solely reliant on Macro Cosmos. But just having the versatility of Macro Cosmos in your side deck, it's just something that can't be underestimated in the current meta. If you're looking to pick up your copies of Macro Cosmos, you can actually get a copy on TCG Player for an ultra rare for around three bucks. So not only is the card really good, it's really affordable and there's probably no reason unless you're playing one of said meta decks that you don't own this card or that you are not siding this card. At number four, I think Spear Mode is an absolute must. Spear Mode is such a phenomenal card. You can wipe off three problematic cards on your opponent's board like it's nothing. Like this card is absolutely amazing against Spiral. You contribute over the Appaloosa, you contribute over the Sleeper, and then you contribute over whatever other problematic monster that they leave on the board. Possibly or probably the Trigate. Not only that, but there's just absolutely nothing that your opponent can do about it. Because what are they going to do? It's not an activated effect. You're literally tributing to Normal Summon. With that said though, 
The card doesn't come without its flaws. First off, you're really reliant on your opponent having an end board of three monsters. So against Spiral, really good. However, against other matchups, it's not always guaranteed that the player is going to open the perfect hand ending on the perfect board. Other thing is, it also eats up your normal summon. If your deck is really reliant on your normal summon being your starter, yeah, it kind of sucks. But at the same time, you have to think about the payoff. For example, in the Spiral matchup, your opponent committed almost their entire extra deck to making their current board, and their recovery is not that good. In the end, you just have to think about the payoff, whether it's worth your normal summon or not, which in my opinion it is. And not only that, you literally have no excuse to not have this card, whether in your side deck or just laying around somewhere at home. If you go on TCG Player, you can literally order the card for $3. So for what it does for its current price point in the current meta, I think the card is just an absolute must have and I think you should be playing it in your side deck. At number three, this is a card I'm sure everybody's become familiar with at this point because if you haven't heard about it yet, trust me, you're gonna hear about it. Whether it's from whatever deck tops the next event or whether it's at a game at your locals where the card just completely blows you out. That's right, the card I'm talking about is the Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is a new card in Ignition Assault that is literally Harpy's Feather Duster and Raigeki put into one. The card is going to become legal this week and undoubtedly it's going to see a lot of play because the card is very versatile and it is very very good. It does have one minor downside to where you must control no face of cards in order to activate the card. So I know I'm saying the card is really good, however there are a few reasons why I didn't necessarily put the card at number one. First off, we still have Salmangri and we have Orcus in the meta. I know somebody is probably going to think or say that oh, Orcus isn't ending on blah 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 board, they're not going to have the Ding Gears to protection. Well, yeah, well, maybe right now they're not ending on that board, but however, as the meta progresses and their builds adapt to the meta and they start realizing, hey, this Lightning Storm card is becoming a problem, they're going to find a way to make sure that Ding has material just so they can protect all of their cards from Lightning Storm. Not only that, I think there's also quite a few cards that you probably don't want to hit with Lightning Storm. Waking the Dragon being one of them, of course, because because there are quite a few decks that if you just put out Ultimate Raid Raptor Falcon, they just can't out it. If you put on the Cheerio Beast against a deck that's primarily based around spells, well, I'm sorry, you're going to have a really, really bad time. Also, we're going to be heading into Master Rule 5, where your Synchro Monsters, your Xyz Monsters, and your Fusion Monsters, they don't need to be in the extra Monster Zone. So if you pop something like a Waking the Dragon... Or or maybe the card just becomes so problematic that people start playing Starlight Road and they just bring out Stardust Dragon for free. I know that last statement is probably a bit of a bold statement because who really knows if people are actually going to be desperate enough to be playing Starlight Road considering the abundance of amazing cards that we currently have available to us. But hey, you honestly, you just never know. Destruction honestly isn't the best thing. Like for example, if Harpy's Feather Duster was unbanned right now, yeah, it would see a lot of play probably staple in every single deck. However, we do have Raigeki at 1, and it's literally not seeing any play. So yeah, the card is phenomenal in the aspect that it functions the same as Harpy's Feather Duster, and it's definitely the reason that people want the card and not the Raigeki effect. However, just having the Raigeki effect as a versatile option for the card just puts it that much over the top, and that's why this card is really good. The other downside to this card is that its price point is just insane. It's like you have to think about it. If you're paying for a card, you have to think, am I getting my worth out of this card? Because currently, this card's sitting at $120 USD. That's just insane. I understand the card is that good, but is it $120 good? That, I don't really know, because when we get to my number one card on this list, ultimately, I think that card is not only better than Lightning Storm, you can literally get an entire playset for for half the price. However, we'll get into that when we get to the number one card. So at number two, we have probably what was one of the most played cards this past weekend. People were main decking three copies of this card. If you weren't playing Spirals, you were playing Droll and Lockbird in some capacity, whether it was in your main deck or your side deck. Because Droll and Lockbird just absolutely stops Spirals from playing. And if you can capitalize that on your next turn, then you are just absolutely golden. You can argue that maybe Jewel and Lockford isn't the best card against every single deck, 
and it's probably not as versatile as some of the other cards on this list. However, if we're currently looking at decks that have a lot of representation or that are seeing a lot of play, Spiral is number one. Although Heroes didn't perform at this event, a lot of people are still playing Heroes because people just absolutely just love the deck. Whether it's just nostalgia or just the play style of the deck, people will not put the deck down no matter what. Then there's other decks like Pendulum. Pendulums are not dead. Even with Electromite banned, the deck is still really, really good. And they search a lot, whether they're drawing off Upstar, whether they're searching for Servant of Endymion, because now they're playing Mythical Institution. They have Mastery to search. They have Blue Boy. There's just a lot of decks that Joe and Lockwood will just completely shut off. Price-wise, if you weren't already stashing three copies of Joe and Lockwood from previous formats, uh, I don't have the best news for you because the card is kind of considered a staple three of in the format as it is right now. So people do have their three copies. The cheapest copy that you can get right now is a common copy of Jordan Lockwood, and you can get that for roughly $5. If you wanted to haul out your deck a bit, which I don't blame you because shiny cards just look nice, you can get Super Joel's for $10 a piece. And honestly, just considering the price of other cards in the format, $10 per copy of Jordan Lockwood doesn't seem like a bad deal to me. And now we're moving on to my number one side deck card of the format. If you are not playing this card in your side deck or in your main deck, if you're not playing this card at all, I I don't know what you're doing. Because this card, I personally think, is better than Lightning Storm. Because you don't have to worry about triggering cards with destruction effects. That's right. The card I'm talking about is Evenly Matched. Evenly Matched, you don't have to pick between spells and traps or monsters. Your opponent is left to pick one card on their entire field if they overcommit to keep. And everything else gets banished face down. And the best thing about cards getting banished face down, you don't have to worry about any card effects being triggered that could be detrimental to you winning your game. If we're looking at the current format for what it is, we're looking at Spirals, we're looking at Altergeist, we're looking at probably Subterror, Salomon Grey, Orcus. Evenly Match is just an absolutely amazing card. Phalanx isn't going to protect them. Dengisu can't protect them. If you Evenly Match Spiral, they are just absolutely going to cry because they have almost absolutely no recovery from that point forward. The biggest downside to evenly match is that you're gonna have to miss out on your battle phase to activate the card. However, if you just entirely blow out your opponent's board and they have almost no recovery, and then you still have your main phase two to establish some sort of board, you are more than likely going to end up winning that game. Now, I did say evenly match is significantly cheaper than Lightning Storm, which is, it's true, it is. But no matter what rarity you're looking for, whether it's the Ultra Rare or the Secret Rare, and honestly, I do recommend just going for the Secret Rare because it's an extra $2. You're looking somewhere around $20 per copy, which yeah, if you're a budget player, it can be seen as a little bit expensive. But Evenly Mash has been a staple card for quite a while. It received its reprint. You had more than enough opportunities to get this card. And the card is just so good. It's a really good investment. You will be getting your money's worth with Evenly Match. Trust me. Anyways, guys, those are my picks for the five best side deck cards of the format. If there's a card that you think that I missed or there's a card that you disagree with on this list, leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to reply. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and it's your boy, Bear Red BXP. Signing off. See you guys. Have a good one.